Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm from Montreal, the province of Quebec, in the country of Canada. This is the fog that I have um, the past few nights. Of course, listen, we should already be close to having snow here or having had some snow and we have not yet. Touch wood. I don't care. I don't want any snow. Birgit, Birgit, Israel, unfortunately had a crash landing right there, which is the approximate public um, situated area where it crashed, right? This is what they're telling the public. But either way, I analyzed the crash area, which we will see the actual uh, crash before and after site. I was comparing the craters. As we see here, a line, we see three craters, well, more than three, but three more apparent bigger. And there's this white little streak in the center here. I'm sure you'll be fascinated when I show you the actual area, which is in Mer Serenitatis, by the way. We're going to go see the actual live area. Here it is. I'm going to get these three craters up, uh, a circle on them. The, here it is before and after in the middle. The streak, the smack, whatever, Israel. Okay, this is what they're showing us. The three craters, I'm keeping a circle up on it because that is what I was looking between in Mer Serenitatis. There's only one area where we see three, uh, maybe four craters this size. And in the area that they said this would be the area there is a streak there i have, i'd have to look at the before and after and go back into the uh, the films that i have obviously i will just wanted to show you um guys and gals that for now and of course we'll go back and do some comparisons so now we're going to see an area i'll tell you the real name but before so it's a name that in Latin stands for a straight cliff because that's what it is said the sun gives its appearance of. Let's go see the wall. So we're zooming into Rupus Recta, one of my favorites. Cindy Luhu, wait till you see the crater in the elevation. It's a linear fault on the moon in the southern eastern part of Mare Nubium. And that's where we're going. The name is actually Latin for straight cliff. This is the most well-known escarpment on the moon, they say. They say that when the sun illuminates the feature at an oblique angle, the parallax, at about day eight of the moon's orbit, the Rupus Recta casts a wide shadow that gives it the appearance of a steep cliff. The fault has a length of 110 kilometers, typical width two to three kilometers, and a height of 240 to 300 meters, almost a thousand feet. There it is, the line, Rubus Recta. There's Bert Crater, there's Bert A Crater. You can see the smaller craters around it. And that's a pretty nice close up to see the elevation of the crater. Another very nice close up, we're going to see Tycho Crater. Now, of course, Tycho Crater is that white crater that's very bright and is, that is at the bottom uh, south side of the moon in the southern highlands, right? And just below um, Tycho Crater, we have the South Pole, the bottom side of the moon. And to give you an idea of where we are, so look at the lines and the objects and the surrounding areas. And I want you to take note of the blotches or patches over top on all the different layers. It, there really is a patchy substance that is over top of certain layers on the moon. Leaves me in comparison, yes, I'm gonna say it, it reminds me of vegetation anyways, without it necessarily having to be vegetation. I could be totally wrong, but I could be totally right. The large white crater that you see in front of you is Endymion Crater. Endymion is a lunar impact crater that lies near the northeast limb of the moon, located to the east of Mare Frigoris that you're going to see coming up right there with all the details. And apparently it's said to have an oval appearance from foreshortening the parallax. I fixed it up not too bad, actually. The diameter is 125,000 meters. The Fecunditatis Basin. Mm, we're talking about, as a diameter, 840 kilometers the sea of fertility, they say. Let's talk a little bit about it. The mare material is of the upper Imbrium epoch. Okay, so here's the thing. There's different times that some of these materials, uh, you know, came together. They also say that 
Um, there's roots coming in from Mare Chrysium and Mare Tranquilitatis. Uh, Bereshit uh, crashed in Mare uh, um, Serenitatis, supposedly. Well, let me tell you guys, I don't know if some of you know about the density of the surface and what it does to objects flying over top of Mare Chrysium and near uh, Mare Serenitatis. You're going to get an extraordinary pull uh, towards the surface more than any other areas because of the density and the way the surface um, would have formed and solidified, they said. I found that out not too long ago. It's pretty interesting. That's why NASA doesn't fly satellites there. So maybe that's what pulled down Bigashit to the surface, that dense, um, uh, magnetic pull to the surface as uh, it was approaching Mare Serenitatis. They say 22 kilometers from the surface, it got a last shot, and then it uh, went out. Take a look just over the name on the bottom left there, Bruce Schwartz Telescope. We're going to zoom up on that area, bottom left, where we see all those amazing craters and details. It looks really, really clear. We're just under the Rima Hyginus crater. Let's go take a look. Here's Mare Serenitatis, Bessel crater inside of the mirror with that line going by as we're panning to the left. We're going to look at uh, Mare Serenitatis first, of course, before we go to that bottom left where I wanted to show you guys. Look at the colors. Look at everything Bessel crater right in the center there as we're traveling along the surface looking for details. At the very, very top, those lines crossing paths over one another. Just to the right there, right there, that's where they say Bereshit uh, is the supposed area where it would have crashed. Just absolutely amazing. I have an amazing community. I'm researching the moon with them. We've got ourselves a big telescope. We're getting our equipment together. We're finding out what's up there. I'm trying to apply as much time as I can in this. And thanks to you all for the support. It's just absolutely incredible. Thanks for taking the time to subscribe and to share videos and to come back each and every day. Thanks for appreciating it. We're coming up to Rima Hyginus Crater, where they say that underground cavern would have imploded millions of years ago. Okay, we're coming up to that area, finally on the bottom left where I wanted to show you all before over the name and logo. Wait till you see the details on the surface. Thanks for watching everyone. So we saw that underground cavern really close, which was right there. That's Rima Hyginus Crater, right there. And now we're looking underneath it. Look at the beautiful details of the craters and the lines going to and from them.
This is my mailing address. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston.